Are you into the weather and into science? And especially, do you live in Ohio and Pennsylvania? Well, this is the uh, video for you. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks, and I'm 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. I'm a television meteorologist based in Youngstown, Ohio, near the Pennsylvania and Ohio state line. And locally, we've had no shortage of interesting weather this week between the heat and the storms. And we're going to talk about that, including what's going to happen going forward in this video. First things first, at the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport, which is in Vienna, Ohio, just north of downtown Youngstown, well, we hit 90 for the second consecutive day today, and this is a number that's going to change, certainly. Uh, for the month as a whole, we're running a little bit above average, but just by a little bit, but that number is going to leap with uh, you know this heat wave that we're in the middle of. By the time we reach the end of the month, I, I suspect we're going to be a few degrees above the average for the monthly temperature in the month of June and you know with the second consecutive 90 degree day today that matches all of 2023 we had two 90 degree days last year we average about eight in a season but that's a long-term average as you can see there's a lot of fluctuation here so there's boom years and bust years we had some years that were on the cool side earlier this century 2003 2004 2014 we had some really hot summers, 2012, 2018, 2020. We were in the teens as far as number of 90 degree days. We're well on our way with two so far. We're going to add to that list, I suspect, before the week is through. But, you know, we've been tracking thunderstorms. It's been one of those weeks where, you know, I've been getting a little bit of, uh, you know, talk back on social media, Facebook, of course, especially, about, uh, you know, the heat's not really been the story. It's been the been the storms. It's rained all the time. Well, in some places, yes, it has been very, very wet over the last couple of days. But in some places, we've seen hardly a drop of rain. And this has been the nature of this week. And oftentimes, it's kind of the nature of summertime thunderstorms. They impact some areas and not others. And the distance between those who get a storm and those who don't can be as little as a half a mile, a few city blocks even sometimes. One place that's gotten walloped a couple of times since yesterday, southeastern Trumbull County, right around Hubbard. This is near the state line, Interstate 80, Route 62. We've had problems with flooding through here. Radar estimates of up to three inches worth of rain in some of these locations today. And that's on top of what fell yesterday. So it's been really, really wet over there. Now I'm recording this video at about 7.08. And as of this recording, we are now free of any severe thunderstorm warnings. We've had, much like yesterday, a slew of severe thunderstorm warnings, both for the wind threat and even for some hail threats as well. And in Lawrence County, over in Western PA in particular, we had a doozy of a hail threat, not for very long, but for a time during the six o'clock hour, this hail core was very impressive that rolled up through the Castlewood area, the east side of Newcastle. But as you can see, it kind of vanished in a hurry. This storm really rained itself out and petered out in a pretty big hurry. We still have some rain and some, some lightning with this storm, but we are no longer pulling down uh, wind energy from aloft to any great degree, and we've stopped producing hail with the updrafts uh, reaching high into the atmosphere. But that was pretty impressive a while ago. Probably some one inch, maybe inch and a half or so diameter hailstones uh, falling between Newcastle and Elwood City with that storm earlier on. And we did have a report of uh, some wind damage around the Newcastle area uh, with the uh, power out, and we've had some sporadic power outages in parts of our area today. We've also had more problems with, with tree damage in parts of southern Trumbull County. Um, this was uh, around McDonald earlier, a tree down on the uh, road. And so, yeah, these storms, when they have pulsed up, they've really meant some business. It's been kind of fascinating over the last couple of hours watching the outflow boundaries dancing around. See those little thin lines that emanate out of thunderstorms? Those are outflow boundaries, little mini cold fronts. And they go across the landscape, and when they collide with each other, they can kick up new activity. We've seen that on a few occasions. As of this recording, a couple of those outflow boundaries um, have produced a fresh storm just north of East Palestine near the Mahoning uh, Columbiana line. This is near Petersburg, New Springfield, New Middletown as well over towards Bessemer. And while this is sub-severe, it certainly is producing a pretty stout downpour. Now at this time last week when we were kind of eyeing up this heat wave this week, we were thinking there wouldn't be that many thunderstorms because at that point it looked like the center of this upper level ridge maybe just a little bit farther to the to the west but the center of that ridge is far enough to the east that we're kind of on the outer periphery of it if you will and not right underneath it right underneath it we're seeing a dearth or a lack of real organized thunderstorm activity that's where the air is warmest aloft that's where you're getting the most sinking the most subsidence it's hardest for those thunderstorms to get going but Conditions are a little more favorable for updrafts to uh, penetrate high into the atmosphere on the fringes 
of this uh, kind of heat ridge. And so you get almost a ring of fire effect where on the outer periphery is where you get your most thunderstorms. And we're kind of in that sweet spot a little bit. And that's why we've seen a little bit of an uptick in our thunderstorm activity over the last couple of days. Now we've adjusted our forecasts accordingly. Uh, some people who maybe checked forecasts last Thursday and really didn't check in with the weather after that, no doubt are a little bit surprised by some of the thunderstorm activity, but you know, you know how it goes. You gotta kind of check these things often because little subtle, nu subtle nuances in the atmosphere can lead to fairly big changes in our sensible weather, especially when we're talking about winter storms and marginal temperatures, but also in the summer season when we're talking about little subtle boundaries and the exact placement of, of an upper level ridge and things like that. So we're gonna do this again Wednesday. I, I suspect the coverage of thunderstorms is a little bit lower on Wednesday, but I don't want to discount the possibility that some of us are still going to get a downpour. You know, this is, it's not wise, it's not a high percentage move, if you will, to kind of uh, play down, if you will, um, the chances of thunderstorms, because these have, you know, these have had some pep in their step the last couple of days. So if we get away with fewer storms tomorrow, that's great for some who are trying to work outside and accomplish things outside. Um, but I think a lot of us, you know, uh, don't mind some of these storms as long as they're sub severe because it does tend to cool things off now the dew point doesn't change much it's still really humid um, but the temperature at least you get some relief from that if a thunderstorm rolls over your location much like the last couple of days we don't have any sort of trigger to uh you know plow into this warm humid air and cause the thunderstorms the thunderstorms are a result of just a lot of instability heat builds up we get up to 90 or so we reach what's called the convective temperature and that's the temperature in which Air parcels really have no choice but to rise high enough to form thunderheads and showers and storms. We're going to reach that convective temperature again on Wednesday. So, you know, it's going to be one of those things again where some of us won't see a drop. Some of us uh, could see a gusty downpour. And this front on the weather map becomes a stationary front off to our north. This front will not cross our viewing area. It'll get about as far south maybe as the southern end of Lake Erie. Uh, later Wednesday night into Thursday. But then it kind of hits the brakes. And we don't have any sort of legit frontal passage until the end of the weekend coming up on Sunday. So until that point, what you see is what you get. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be humid, and there'll be a scattering of afternoon thunderstorms. But we do have a legitimate cold front heading our way. It looks like Sunday and into Sunday night. Now, this is not gonna bring any sort of autumnal chill, but it is going to cut into the heat enough that a lot of us will notice it early next week. Here's a look at where that uh, kind of bend in the jet stream is Sunday evening, and this will guide a cold front south and east and this is a look at the atmospheric moisture in other words how much water vapor is in the atmosphere from the ground on up several tens of thousands of feet and you can see this is drier air out here and this is going to punch in as we go towards sunday night and into monday and tuesday of next week now it's going to cool off just back to average for a day or two temperature wise but average sounds pretty good when we've been dealing with 90s day after day and with the decrease in uh, dew points early next week the heat index for a couple of days anyway won't be much of a story that looks most likely to be Monday and Tuesday. Beyond this point, though, I am expecting heat to try to build back in as we go towards the second half of next week. And when we look at, you know, kind of the longer range trends, not much has changed in the Pacific. And this is most important when we look globally at weather patterns across North America. We have La Nina emerging in the equatorial Pacific, but it's not the main player just yet. It'll become probably the main player late in the summer and especially into the fall and the winter. But for right now, we're looking in the northern Pacific as opposed to the equatorial Pacific. And this configuration with cool water like this and the warm water extending from Japan all the way almost to the west coast of North America, this is an important configuration when trying to ascertain what the jet stream is going to try to look like for a lot of this summer. And this particular configuration does favor quite a bit of heat, especially from the Rockies on east as we go through the summer season. So I think this is probably going to be one of the hottest summers on record locally and globally as well. So even though we're going to have occasional relief, I wouldn't expect any sort of really big, great cold front that we're really looking forward to. I wouldn't expect that sort of an event anytime real soon, given what we are in the middle of right now and what I see in the foreseeable future for the rest of June and into July. Tune in to Weather for Weather Geeks again Wednesday evening. We'll recap any storms that popped up on Wednesday. We'll take another look at the short range, the medium range, and look for any signs of, of change as we go towards the end of the month. Hope to see you then.